Hi everyone. I am so excited to be here bringing you the Introduction to Embroidery 2023 calendar by me, Nestlings by Robin. It's a great little self-paced mini class. You can jump ahead if you want. Every month I'm going to go by what's actually in the calendar. So here's the calendar as it comes to you. I'm going to take it out and show you a little brief overview of what's in here. So each month you're going to get a calendar like this with a three inch design and an inspirational saying, and then quick glance at a month that can go in your pocketbook, whatever you need to do with it. And on the back of those months, we have information like this month is basic tools. And so that's what we're going to discuss today. Basic tools. That'll just get us going. And every month I'll be following what's on the back of that month. So we're going to do January. Next month when the video comes, you'll get February's tips. So basic tools, let's discuss basic tools. Embroidery is so easy. It's such a fab fabulous embellishment. It goes anywhere. You can put it, it doesn't have to be its own project. It can go on another project. You can use parts of these designs to enhance another design, a flower, a leaf. Any of these little snowflake blades could be the veining of a leaf if you wanted it to be. So you just have to step out of the box a little and take a peek at what you want to use it on and go from there. So the first thing we're going to talk about are needles. Um, basically, you're going to use any decent embroidery needle. These are, you know, these are just your basic needles you can get at Joann's. This package has been opened. These are John James tapestry needles. Really good brand of needle as well. My favorites are, uh, these are Jenna Kimball's Foxglove Cottage, and these are the embroidery redwork needles at a size 10. Uh, these are my favorite. I like them. The needle on them is very nice. It has, it's kind of in line with, the hole is in line. I don't know if you'll be able to see that very well right there, but you can see there's not, and I'll put it against the black background. Um, you can see that it doesn't bulge out a lot at the end, which is great because you don't want a needle that's going to come up to the eye and then bulge out a lot. And then once it starts bulging out, then it just creates drag and it's harder to pull through. Next we have hoops. I like hoops, but I like little hoops. So as you can see, this one here, that might be a three inch hoop. I got both of these at Michael's. I really liked them because they have, see that bit of a groove in there so it locks into itself before I have to screw it together. Uh, this one's really nice. I think this was the three by six and I like because my fingers go all the way from the underside so it's easy to hold. It's not a big like six inch circle. Recommendations for hoops. The next thing we had on the list was stabilizer. And I really like to have stabilizer. This helps me from pulling too hard. Uh, gives it, you know, it's not gonna create a lot of puckering if I accidentally do pull too hard. So this particular stabilizer that I really like is the Pellon P44F. And they call it a, it's an iron-on interfacing is what they call it. And you can see these little dots on the other side. That's the side that's the fusible part that goes against the wrong side of your fabric. And you'll see on this one here, there it is on the back side. So it just, it irons on real nice. It's real thin. And then you can stitch. The next thing we had on there were marking tools. Now for marking tools, a lot of different ways to do it. If you're going on light fabric, your good old basic pencil, the lines should be dark enough on those cards that you should, in good lighting, um, be able to just trace with your fabric right over top of them. And a decent pencil will do the job. For light fabrics, oops, go this way so you can read it. This is the uh, Bone Mechanical Pencil. You can see it has a white, a white chalk lead in it, which is my favorite for working on dark fabrics. Um, 
sometimes looking, that card is a little too thick to probably use with a light box or a window. So that might be a little difficult. And so my backup solution for that, and I have some of these on my website as well. I have the tracing kits. But if you have these in your stash from way back when, the old, old, old tracing papers, these work fabulous because you can just put that right there between um, your, you can put it, put the tracing paper right on your fabric and then um, trace right over it. I did it, I made an extra copy so that it was on thinner paper so that I didn't have to use my wheel over it. All right, so that's marking tools. The other thing you're gonna see as you go through the months, let's see which month it starts in. There's March, here's March. Here's April. Here's May. Oh, okay, on the bottom of May, you'll see ideas for using small embroidery designs. So as we get into May and we start talking about the stitches more, you'll see that I have some designs on here to add to the collar or cuff or pocket of a button-up shirt. Really cute, it would be really cute on a pocket shirt. There are lots of those little ideas in there. And one of the ideas that I had in there was making ornaments. So here's your January design idea. There's the snowflake. It has a little beaded tassel and a little beaded hang. And I just put it together pillowcase style, flipped it right side out, stuffed it, and then added a little bead trim around it. So there is January, everyone. I'm very excited for February. Please tune in again. And if you have any questions, you know where to email me at and we can get those answered for you. In the meantime, keep stitching. Bye.